ladies and gentlemen, the winter break. The winter break is here, ladies and gentlemen. The winter break is here. Let's uh, let's so clap let's, for the winter break. Let, let, let's give it um, up to uh, having absolutely nothing to watch at the weekends for the next three months. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing at all to watch. Uh, I'm happy it's here. I won't lie to you. I'm happy it's here. Uh, oh, of course, very you're relaxed. happy it's here. Well, yeah, very relaxed. <laughs> um it's i'm glad not to be depressed every weekend not to have heart attacks every midweek um i'm i'm just happy i'm i'm happy that it's here maybe i'll start missing it by january or february but so far it's it's very peaceful artem it's very peaceful um when, how when do you, are you feel? um when are you off from college and stuff like when's your final I, exam? I, my last exam was yesterday I'm, oh I'm late. so you're off now yeah yeah, I'm off for like a month. And which is... you were you were saying that like okay, we're recording at seven p.m. my time, so it's probably like what like two a.m. at yours time. <laughs> nice. Nah, it's only half twelve. Half twelve, and you were saying it's too late. Ah, no, come on, you've lost your way. You're not even. You're not in for a month. <laughs> you've got a, You've got to thirty days to recover after yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but yeah, no, Artem, how do you feel? I don't feel great about it. It's it's so annoying because it's like it's yeah. well needed, obviously, and you know, in a country like Russia where it gets so cold and the stadiums aren't all yes. like Zenit Stadium, like it has to happen. But it's just upsetting because you know, like you kind of get cut off mid season. This is why I'm always an advocate of going back to the March November calendar. Yeah, but um, no, it's. Look, it is what it is. We're used to it at this point. Like I think, for the last, you know, four or five years, I've been kind of annoyed. But this year, I'm just kind of like, ah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just used it to it. It is what it is. Point, so, it is what it is. Exactly. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, but, like, we better discuss the last game week because it was a little bit, sure, well. a bit of a, a mad one in some ways, and then in some ways it was just so expected. So. For the, the week started off with Korea beating Ruben Kazan 2-0. Um, very impressive Le- performance. Slutsky out. Am I, am I going to be the one to say it? Slutsky out. Yeah, I actually can't even disagree with that because Vittoria got sacked, which we'll get to later on. Yeah. Doing better than Ruben are doing, which, okay, they're expected to because they're Spartak, but then also doing really well in Europe. And okay, right, it took yes. to the last game day to actually confirm that they're going to go through the group, but it was a hard group and everything else. So, like, all things considered, he actually didn't do too badly. Slutsky is doing worse. And recent form, he's only won one in his last five games. And it's been very disappointing. Like, Karelia is a team that, okay, they're doing very well this season. Yeah. But, like, really really with the players and the team that Rubin have they shouldn't yeah. be losing this comfortably against Krilia like Hannah did you watch this match by any chance no I just heard you tweeting about how uh, Krilia hadn't scored yeah Krilia was... were all over Rubin for the whole game like there was a few chances there was one where Krilia were given a free kick they took it quickly uh, I believe it was Cervelli maybe could be absolutely wrong on that one of the Krilly forwards, maybe it was Yashov actually, doesn't matter. One of the Krilly forwards uh, got it, got around Dupin, had an open net, hit the post. It was a tight angle, to be fair, but that's when I tweeted how they not yeah. scored. Krilly were all over Ruben for this game. Like There there was actually no doubt in my mind of watching it that Krilly mm-hmm. should be the winners, but then when they scored the first goal, it was like, Okay, this is this is has been coming. Like it's absolutely fair. Ruben never looked like they were gonna get one back. Sergei Pinar yeah. scored his first goal in uh, in the RPL. Yeah. Seventeen years of age in forty two days, I believe, becomes the third youngest scorer in the league ever. Um, mm-hmm. you know, big weight on his shoulder, obviously, because he's uh he's he's supposed yeah. to be Russia's super talent. Um, so he's finally off the mark. And what a great time to have it done just before the winter break. You know, he'll be going into the this, this season next year. Um, the second half of the season with confidence take, take, taken from that. So, just 
absolutely amazing performance from Crilla, to be honest, and they absolutely deserve to be where they are in the league, which is, I believe, sixth. Yeah. What the hell is this? They're doing well for themselves, and uh, I've got I've got a couple of facts yeah. and, and stats for you. First of all, it's a question. Yeah. So Pinyaev is the third one. Do you know who the youngest scorer in RPL history is? Yeah, it's Chana Chana Ananidze. Yeah. What What happened to that guy, man? That guy. Oh, he's been injured. Like he's he's just had injuries after injuries, and uh, yeah. he was playing yeah. for. He got released from Spartak, to Dynamo, and he went to who? To Belize. He went to like Dinamo TV. Do you know Jano was Jano played under Tedesco, I think, which is absolutely insane to think about. I don't think that's insane at all. Like I think that that was when he he had it. That was in twenty nineteen, bro. Fitness. Jano played for Spartak in twenty nineteen. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all because I like I actually I remember him leaving, and it wasn't that long ago, so that doesn't surprise me. But. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, my other thing is, right? Go on. Ruben Kazan. Yeah. First three games of the season, three wins. The next 15 games of the season, three wins. Oof. Plus, they were knocked out by that Polish team in Europe. Oof. So, three wins in 15 games for a team of that caliber. It's, it's not cutting. It's pretty terrible. It's pretty terrible. It's relegation for... You know what though, like it's 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 even funny to think about it because like people were talking about like what was the transfer fee that they were looking for Fiche at, at the at the Which I ain't done shit in three months. Exact how much were they looking to sell him for? Was it fifteen were, or twenty million or something? No no no. Fifteen was offered, they wanted like twenty five. Yeah, I thought that, that that's what it was. So fifteen was offered for Fiche. Right now, you'd say that that's way too much. I'd say that probably seven or eight million is probably as the maximum that they'd be offered for him yeah. in winter. Like, it's crazy how much value he lost, and it was purely, purely, the greed of uh, Ruben for not letting go. Like, doesn't matter yeah. what player you have in the Russian league when you get fifteen million. I'm a firm, firm believer that you should, in most cases, take it. Same thing with with Asmoon and Zenit. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. Actually, we'll we'll talk about all the players who are becoming free agents. I forgot to get that tab up, but like in the summer when when uh, Asmoon was uh, under offer at fifteen million from Bayer Leverkusen, I was telling like I was saying on the podcast, I was saying it everywhere else. Yeah. Zenit should take it. There's only one year on his contract. He's gonna leave. He's not gonna. He's not gonna. You know stay on and don't get me wrong Asmund's been good this season when we've needed him but yeah. Zuba's still been the main striker and like Asmund just looks like he's not there mentally anymore it doesn't look like he wants to play for Zenit he looks like he wants to go away so why not get some money for that like I get it Zenit have an endless pot of money and money's not really yeah. the thing that they want to be looking at but it just seems un- it just seems stupid not to consider offers when they're when they're like that with one year left like of the that, contract yeah. guaranteed um, that the player is going to leave. So look, it it is what it yeah. is. But Fiche says same thing. You're offered. I'm actually going to look. I'm actually going to look where uh, when Fiche's last goal contribution came. I know he scored two for Georgia, but that doesn't really count. Um, yeah. Uh, Asmoon apparently is going to go to Lyon. That deal has been agreed. Uh, pre-contract next summer, but Leon are trying to get him this winter as well, and then Zenit are trying to tap up some Brazilians because of course they are. Yeah. Um, as a replacement for that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm just looking up Quicha's thing right now. Quicha has one goal and three assists this season. Yeah, just terrible, surprisingly absolutely high. terrible. And the funny thing is, at in the summer when um, Dinamo sold Macaro for was it seven million? Yeah, they sold him and said, "Okay, look, we like they didn't come out and say this, but there was rumors going around that in the club they believe that he'd reached his full potential. He's been very good for Dinamo since. He's been very good, and Fiche has been terrible for Ruben since. That Qui- yeah. could end up being like very, very poor judgment in the end. At the time, it didn't seem terrible." Right now, it's starting to seem very bad. It is, yeah. I mean, Kuicha, Kuicha scored one goal this season. That was in match day two. Then he yeah. has three assists. Yeah, yeah. And one of them came against Dinamo, like, in 28 November. So, it's not... But, like, 
Well, Makarov has been far better. I think if you said, if you look at it, if you look back at it now, seven million for Makarov is understandable. Absolutely, you know, I it's, think. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I think that Dinamo actually got a pretty good deal there. You know, obviously Lisovoy has been has been injured, so you know Makarov has, has stepped in and he's been fantastic this season. Like I have not no fault, especially in the last few games, he's been really coming to coming into his own. Um, but uh, I'd say. Yeah move on from proven past that. I don't think there's anything else to discuss with them or Krilia for that matter. Um, yeah. I suppose we could say is that Zafan, the right back, has left Krilia. He will no longer be playing with them. He's left on uh, mutual consent, I believe. Um, yeah. CSK Moscow beat uh, Arsenal Tula 2-0. No surprise there. Fair enough. No surprises. Yeah. Big win for Ural. Yeah, this, this is because I didn't think I didn't think Ural could ever score four goals. No. I didn't I, think it was possible. It's funny, like me and Hanu obviously were part of the that so rare thing with David, um, and I wrote the preview for this game and said that it could go either yeah. way. I said that these teams are the exact opposite of each other. I said, Rube, like if you look at the goals, can see. I think Rostov had the second most goals scored at the time, and the second, or sorry, the third most goals scored in the league at the time. And the what second the fuck? and the second most conceded, Ural had until this game had only scored eight goals, and had conceded seventeen, which was the worst in the league for goals for, and the second best in the league for goals against. So like, Ural's games have been really really low scoring. Rostov's goals have been, uh, games have that been really has high scoring. my mind. So that's but this is exactly what I was saying. This is why in the preview I said don't pick any. A Rostov players pick Ural defenders but I picked them for the wrong reason because I picked them on the basis that I thought that this game was going to be nil nil in the end it actually turned out that Kedju Muradov the left winger slash left wing back scored um, two goals yeah. Arsen Adamov scored one goal uh, Kuzmichev as well got an assist uh, it was just it was mental. Like if you look at the stats of this game, it's ridiculous. Like Paulos continues his. I think he scored fifteen goals from fifteen penalties in in the the Russian Premier League. It's the best. Um, it's the best the record in Russian Premier League. Imagined. Um, but yeah, unbelievable. He's just he's the man you want yeah. on the spot. Look at these stats though. Twenty one goals. Or sorry, twenty one goals. Twenty one shots. Eight on target. Sixty seven percent possession. Ural on the other hand, seven shots six on target 33 percent possession they were absolutely clinical with their chances unbelievable just absolutely i think i think top class this season of russian football we can finally debunk xg yeah xg is debunked xg is out here i'm going to tell you what spartak i'm going to tell you about spartak as well um but this this has honestly blown my mind that rostov have the third highest goals in the league that is insane in I the know, zone i know well. i know that's the thing like if you look at their team it's actually super high scoring like <laughs> 30 goals in 18 games is nothing to be scoffed at and before this it was like you know obviously 29 goals in 17 games which is an even better ratio like they'd been scoring left right and center like you could always bet on Rostov to score a goal but it's it, it's mental that clearly like that just didn't matter like Ural were just able to keep themselves solid defensively except for giving away a penalty and conceding it but like just yeah, man. Pass. Like, this is because I'm looking at the uh, that thing, right? Mm. They put they put two past Zenit. They yeah. put two past Ufa. Yeah. They put four past Arsenal Tula. Yeah. They put five past Ruben Kazan. Yeah. They put two past Ro- uh, Sochi, but lost. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're scoring like two every game, but then they shipped four to Zenit, shipped four to Krilia. Yeah. Shipped three to Sochi. Shipped four to Ural, shipped two to Zenit. That's insane, honestly. They're it's, living on the edge. It is. It's living on the edge. Like, and it's, <laughs> it's honestly entertaining. Like, you can always bet on goals for their matches. So, I, for that reason, I hope that they can climb out of here. But like, jeez, it's just it's a madness. The the relegation battle this season was absolutely unbelievable. Ural just three weeks ago, I believe, were bottom. Yeah. Um. So, just absolute respect to them, um, and 
yeah, like I hope that they can keep keep that form up in the in the second half of the season. Dinamo Truth is in it. Pretty bad game to be honest. Claudinho scored. Um, he's really proving to be an amazing signer for Zenit. We already knew this. Skulkins have scored for Dinamo. Um, you know, probably a pretty fair result, all things considered. Dinamo will be yeah. happy. They're still in the race. It was first against second. Dinamo are only two points off Zenit. Do you and think Dinamo could win? Do you think Dinamo will win? Actually, I don't think they will win. Um, but I think that they can. I think that. I'd be surprised if Dinamo weren't the team that were going to the Champions League with Zenit this season. That's what I'll say. Um, yeah, that's fair. I'll tell you this, right? Go on. I think Dinamo have a better squad than Zenit. Bullshit. Overall. Go but away. I think I think that is, I think that Zenit... is such a bad opinion. Do you want to go? I can go position by yeah, position. Yeah, absolutely. You, okay? Let's do it. The abs, right. Jesus yeah, we're not. We're, I'm not saying squad. I'm not saying starting eleven. Starting eleven, best eleven versus best eleven. Then it win. Easily. Oh no no no! Hang and on. Let's let, no. Let's do this. Let's do this fairly. Let's do starting eleven against starting eleven. Then go subs against subs. No, I'm oh. saying I'm saying Dynamo have better depth, and Dynamo as a squad as the whole thing, are they have more than Zenit too. <laughs> starting eleven. There's no comparison. There's no comparison. Starting eleven. Okay, I'll say that with you. Zenit. Zenit. Starting eleven is much much better. Okay, but but show me. Okay. Goalkeeper Leshuk and uh, Shunin versus Kurzakov and Kritsyuk. No one really cares. That's almost equal. Or do you want to fight that? No, I think I think Dinamo have it better there to be honest. Okay, good, fair enough. I think that right I think that back, Shush, I think the Shunin is the best out of those four keepers, and that's all that matters because there's only one keeper that starts. Okay, that's fine. Um, right backs, we've got Varela and Ka- Varela and uh, Parshiv Luke. Against Carabao. Versus Enzo Torben. Yeah. Zenit. All day. Okay, fine. Defend center backs uh they win. Dinamo win. They've got Balbuena or Dets, Evgeniev, yeah. and whoever. They have another decent player. And versus Rovlin and uh, Lovren and Rakitsky and just Jacob. Dinamo win that. I think it's close, but I think you're right. I think that Dinamo okay, do good. have to win that right. one. Um um, but I'll, you know, I'll say I'll say that I'd rather have Dinamo's defenders, but probably mainly for the longevity of it. I think in a big game, I'd probably rather Zenit's players. That's the way I'll say. I'll say that like if if look if we're building a squad, I'll say Dinamo. Okay, fine, fair enough. Uh, left backs, we don't do you do you want to debate left back? Of course we do. We, do. we want to debate back. every position on the pitch. We're, okay, we're, fine then. Okay, okay. At the moment, so, right as as it stands, it's two two. Okay, fine. It's two two. It's two two just for you. Okay. Yeah. Um. Now we're looking at left back. So it's got, we've got um Luxalt and, and Skopinsev against Santos versus Douglas Santos and, and who? Krugovoy. Krugovoy. Dinamo win that just because Krugovoy is a nobody. Are you taking? Have you watched Krugovoy play? Ha, has have you has has Krugovoy watched himself play? Krugovoy when was is the a last very time Krugovoy good player. Played? No. Okay. Oh, he has nice. no. He he does come on now and again as a defender but he's a very good player like okay he's the worst out of those four but that's not to be scoffed at like I think Douglas Santos is the best out of those four look I'm saying right I'm I, saying squad I'm like, saying Krugerboy if you has think, played in the Champions League and has not looked out of place look what I'm saying is if Zenit lose Douglas Santos it's a lot worse than Dinamo losing Luxard or Skopinsev. Both of them can do a job. Whereas Krugovoy would... Krugovoy could actively hurt Zenit's title chances. I'm which is why I'm sure, saying Dinamo sure have the better I agree with that at all. I don't think, that, I don't think that's true. But this one is up to the audience. This one is up to David Sanson. Because okay, he's, he's but our only the way, the way I see point. it is, right, Skopinsev and Laxalt are both super attacking players, right? They're, okay. like, purely the way that Dinamo play... Yeah, of course it suits, and it's clearly you know Scotland have scored at the weekend and uh, and all of that. But like, I think Krugovoy can can do a job at left back, and he hasn't done a job at left back many times when Zenit, for example, haven't had the centre mid. So Douglas Santos has been in midfield, and Krugovoy has played at the left back. Like Krugovoy is absolutely a great player, and I don't think that he can be scoffed at as a second as a second left back. I don't think that that's that's fair. 
Like I said, I think he's he's probably he's probably he's probably the worst out of the four left backs we mentioned. But that's only because all the left backs are very good. In fact, all like right, he's probably enough. on level playing field with Lexal. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, I'll take that. So so are we saying are we saying okay. three two then? Fine, just for you three two. Okay. Thank you. Um, midfield, right now, what we're going to do for this? So midfield four Zenit midfielders are going to be Barrios, Wendell, Kuziab, and Osdoer. Okay. Yeah. Barrios and Wendell, probably the best midfield pairing in the league. Okay. I don't even know if there's a probably there. Okay. Um, Dinamo Moscow, Moro, Fomin, Zakarian, and Shimansky. That's a better four. Zakarian is not in there. We have to put Zakarian. Okay, no, fine. Because we don't have him. This but when then, did the, I mean, fo- the formation yeah. you're looking at here is not what they play. Like we know that for a fact. Zaharian is, know, is one like, of the forwards. He's he, like, if you compared Zaharian to Claudinho, fair. If you compared him to fucking Wilmar Arias and Cruz, come on, like that's not the same player. All right then, Foreman, Moro, and Shemansky versus. You know what? I'm losing my argument. I won't lie. <laughs> 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 um. Look, look. But okay, you can, know. Can, I, can, can I just say, right? Dinamo's midfield. If if you put if you swapped Dinamo's midfield for Zenit, sorry, if you put Fulman, Moro, and Shimansky in Zenit, it would do as well. It would do as well. I I can't disagree with that. I think that they're very good players, but like like in fact, Shimansky, I think would be amazing for Zenit. Actually, but Jesus, I love him, but. Yeah. If you're talking about like the depth there, right? The four versus the three. I feel like with those four that you meant for, for Zena, Barrios, Kuzayev, Ozdoyev, and Wendell, it gives you every type of centre mid. You've got the guy, yeah. the bulldog, who does all the hard work. You've got Kuzayev, who's like box to box. You've got um, uh, Wendell, who's very smart on the ball and can really like change yeah. the game. And then you've got Ozdoyev, who's kind of also box to box has his really good moments taking shots and and scoring great goals like he did against Chelsea like he has done before um I don't know like I just feel like Zena have the perfect package there like Morrow's good Foreman's good and uh Schumansky's good do they offer the same amount of versatility that Zenit's players do I don't think so and that's why I'm gonna go for Zenit midfield that's fair, honestly. You know, uh, Dinamo's attacking line is not really that good. I don't think like it's with not... you at all. I think that Dinamo's attacking line is amazing. I just don't think it's no, good. No, by, attacking, by attacking line, I mean, like, literally the forward. Like, Tukavin and Grulev, fine. But then, by I mean, it's good, but, like, if you look at the names in there, okay? Clinton and Ye, I love him, but yeah. he's, he's not really it, okay? Yeah. Uh, Igboon, I don't know why he's still there. Um, Gladyshev is a child. Anton Terikov, I don't know who that is. Um, Lisova is good, but he's got an ACL tier. So you're left only with Tukavin and Grulev, who are both okay, right? They're both pretty decent. But are they title winning? No, they're not. I don't think so. I don't think See, they can. Like they're, they're good. Like, that's the thing, title winning. Like the, the way I look at it is, let's just compare right strikers and wingers, right? I'll actually take Asmoon out of Zenit's team because he's leaving anyway, right? Just to make it kind of a little bit more fair. Um, so, like, you're talking about Zaharan, who's class. Makarov, who's very good this season, very good last season. Clearly, we were talking about him, worth the 7 million. Tukavin, who's young but good. I don't know. I don't know. Like, but it's not Grilov, fair to Grilov compare Grilov them good. with... But, like, they, they, don't, they don't compare to Claudinho and Malcolm. They don't, they, they don't, don't compare to Clarinho Malcolm, and that's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, yeah. like, Mustavoy is probably as close as you can compare, say, someone like. I don't know. Like, mm, I, don't know. I think Jakarian. Zakarian. Yeah, that's fair. I think Zakarian and Makarov both better than uh, Mustavoy. I can agree with that. I absolutely can agree with yeah. that. Like, Mustavoy, I love him. Some people don't like him. I think that he does a great job. I think he always performs when he's on the pitch. He comes up with his moments now and again, and he's just always there for the team. Like you never really see him complain about anything. He's just, he's just there, and he has he, like like I said. Most of all, Dynamo would be scary. I think he'd be good. Most there. of all, Dynamo would be good. Yeah, he'd be good there. Yeah. So, based on that conversation, like, 
I lose. Like, but it's the thing is the way that you came into it, like fighting and saying, like, oh yeah, Dynamo, absolutely, yeah, better, better squad. Yeah. Than... On the, on the face of it, you might say that, but like when you actually look at it, Zenit do have a better team, and that's um, that's not say, that says Dynamo don't have an amazing team. In fact, like Dynamo are one of the most entertaining teams in the league right now. I really really like their team. Yeah. I like their manager, Shand- uh, Sandro Schwartz and Buvac have both signed extensions Extended, until yeah. twenty twenty four, and I think that's amazing. Not only for Dynamo but also for the league because Dynamo, I feel like this team genuinely can do well in Europe. Like yeah. back in the day. Uh, you know, Dynamo were doing well in the Europa League as well. Back when they had Kakorin, back when they had uh, uh, Valbuena, like Kurani and all these players. Like Dynamo were a very solid yeah. force. And this seems again like that same kind of team that can perform in Europe. So I think that I really hope this team sticks around. Um, and you know, honestly, uh, Dynamo is is how you build a club, not like Loco. Like that's how you should. You should like do a rebuild. Yeah. You know, yeah, they yeah. will tell you. I'll tell you what. Uh, Dynamo squad because lo- Abuvac came in, I believe, uh, in February 2020. Yeah. And funnily enough, actually in 2019, so the last game before Abuvac came, Zenit actually smashed Dynamo 3 0 So we can see the growth there. Yeah. Right. So Dynamo's team at that time was Shunin, who's still there. Yeah. Parshevlyu, who's not really there. Raikov, who's gone. Morozov, who's gone. Ordets is still there and he's doing well. Uh, then you had Yusupov and Neustadter, who are both gone, thankfully. Then you had Konstantin Rausch, who, Jesus Christ. Uh, you had Igboon up front. You had Maximilian Philip. Yeah. And you had Shemansky. Yeah. So only three players you have. And then the bench was just absolute idiots. You had Kirill Panchenko was there. Yeah. Charles Kabore. But isn't Tony that, Sunic. Isn't that mental, though? Like, because... Dynamo went really from buying all these players who just have names to actually building something that's really strong. Like now with Foreman, with Morrow, like don't get me wrong, these guys have names, but they're not as big as the names yeah. that they would have had before. Like, like Philip, thank God he's gone. Okay, they still have yeah. Clinton Lee, right? You, you're a fan of his. I think he's shite, but like. <laughs> Like I like the guy, but he just never he never becomes consistent. But that's the thing. Like, look, they brought in Balbuena, right? And he's nowhere near the same level of like he's a name, but he's nowhere near the same level as Maximilian Philip, or yeah, like even in Ye, like he's not. And same with Guillermo Varela, like he's he's a player who you know had been at a very high level, had been at cool clubs, United, had yeah. been at other places, was in Denmark, and they brought him from yeah. Denmark to, to to Moscow, and he's been fantastic. Like. This is one of the best rebuilds in Russian football recently, and I really hope it continues. Sandro Schwartz is one of the best managers and one of the smartest people football-wise in the league. So just respect. And yeah. Bubac as well, you cannot uh, overlook his, his influence. So You know what they say, real G's move in silence like lasagna. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mr. Lindwain said that, and he was right. Right. Um, yeah, so yeah, I mean Dynamo, fair enough, fair enough. We go into um, Ahmed against them. This game was just funny because there were three penalties in it. Oh, uh, Jesus that's all. Christ. Yeah, like it, that. That honestly, yeah, a little bit wild, a little a bit of wild one. Kim Kim just have not been on good form at all. Um, they are now finding themselves bottom of the league. Ahmad are on fantastic form, one of the best in the league with four wins. Out they lose every years. year. They do, they do, um, and inevitably after the winter break, they're not going to do anything. Ahmad haven't drawn a game yet. They're the only team in the league that hasn't drawn. That's a game. mad. Nine wins and nine losses. Talk about that balance. Is mad. <laughs> yeah, that is mad. No, I uh, actually. Oh my god, you, Hattie, you, Nine wins, nine losses. Twenty-four <laughs> goals for. Twenty-four <laughs> goals against. Jesus Christ! That's talk amazing. about balance. <laughs> Jesus. That's amazing. That's but no, you should be glad amazing. that I'm not. Uh, that I'm not saying Ahmad to Europe shouts because I have good reason to do that for once and I'm not doing it. I don't think you have good reason. Because last year they were eighth. Last year they were eighth and I was saying Ahmad are going to Europe. Yeah, I know, but like Um, I genuinely think Creely have a better show. Yeah, probably they probably do. I don't know. Um 
But yeah, we won't get too much into that game. I didn't watch this one. I assume you didn't either. No, I didn't. Krasnodar drew Tunisia. Krasnodar in the... What a boring game. Seventy-four percent possession. Okay, fair enough. Boring uh, game. Alien. I had him as my captain in fantasy. <laughs> I know people are gonna be like, "Oh, that's so funny." Whatever. Yeah, at least I didn't have. Uh, who was it? Oh no! Actually, never Nobody. mind. Claudinho ended up scoring no, in the end because yeah. Claudinio missed the penalty yeah. and it was on like minus two at some point. So it was funny, but yeah. not for that long. Alien actually got man of the match in the end. He did play really well in this match. He just couldn't score. Um. So we won't go into more of that. Locomotive beat Ufa. Loco, Kirk and Maradishvili. Rangnick, yeah. Rangnick finally going through. Yeah, not the, not the most surprising result in the world, to be honest. So it is what it is. Um, and uh, this was... Hilarious. This was, I was, I just want, I didn't want this game. Like I, I, I told Anton, I told many people, Legia is the last game of the year for me. I don't care if we win or if we lose this game. So I was completely unattached. I just wanted the winter break to happen. And I don't know how we didn't score in that second half, but that's the third time, maybe even the fifth time that I've said that this season in the RPL. And um, I've got a stat for you, Artem, right? This is this debunks this debunks XG. Okay. Okay. So I think we had the worst XG of our entire Europa League group. And we topped it. Uh, I believe we had the third worst possession in the entire Europa League group stage. Topped the group, right? But what I'm trying to tell you is, right, I'm going to give you the possession stats of our wins and our losses. Oh, this yeah. Season, well, we know right? this already. We've talked about this on the podcast yeah. before. Yeah. It's like we have lost two games. Like, in every, every game we've lost, right, in only two of them did we have less than 50% possession. And those were the Benfica games. In every other game that we've lost, we've dominated. Make it make sense. Ma- make it make you sense. You know, it would be absolutely team. hilarious. All right, obviously people know after this game, Rui Vittoria left the club. Right, He was a little bit reluctant left in the end. Um, probably not, not on the high he wanted to leave out on, but like it is what it is. Um, how funny would it be if the manager was coming in, but not only this guy with the questionable drip, um, how funny would it be if his tactic was take tip and pass it to the other team? We want to get less than fifty percent possession. <laughs> like, no, like, like I... he was like super superstitious about this. I was just like, no, right? If like if if yeah. ever Spartak had more than fifty percent possession, he'd just tell them to hoof it to the other team. Exactly. That's because <laughs> it's like I would because look, this game we started, we had more possession. Yeah. By half time, we had more possession. Sixty minutes, we. I knew we were going to lose this game. I knew it, right? I, I was 100% sure we'd lose this game. Whereas with, like, I was hoping in all the European games that we get battered and we win. Yeah. Because that's the only way. Both games against Napoli, less possession. Draw against Leicester, less, less possession. And the last game against Legia, we had, like, 30% possession. Yeah. So, we don't like the ball. We no. don't. We do not like it. We no. do not like it. Don't at all. So... Um, but yeah, this this match was a bit of a wild one. Uh, Naboa and his super scoring penalties and Popov scoring against his old team. Um, yeah, like it probably shouldn't have been three nil. Like it was one nil up to the eighty eighth. Definitely minute, shouldn't have been three nil. Yeah, I th- I thought that it would end one nil to be honest, and then it, when they scored the second, I was like, oh well, okay, there it is. That's the end. And then Coffrier just stupidly took it on one of the players in uh, the box. Yusupov uh, converted the penalty. With his 3 0. Um, Sochi absolutely smashing it in, in, in this first section of the season. They're third. I um, don't know how they'll be able to hold on to that because their their um, form has been patchy and after after winter you just never know what's going to happen. But they do look good. Um, but yeah. that, that, is, that is the wrap up of the league until. February 20th, I think it's 25th, but this says 27th, I think, like, TBD to be decided, so. Yeah. Time. Look at Spartak's first game, by the way, for the new manager. Sorry? Look at Spartak's first ah. game for the new manager. <laughs> <He's> just, he... <laughs> oh my god, Hadi, what the hell? Have you seen his first three games? CSKA, <laughs> then Dinamo, <laughs> then Krasnodar, then, okay, then Nizhny. 
And then locomotive. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know what? When is the Glasgow Round game? It's the third week, the 13th of March. So th- that we'll probably have a European game after Glasgow. <laughs> oh my god. No, but the, f- the first five li- uh, league games, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, it could be a rough start to the year. I ain't gonna lie to you. Jesus Christ. It could be a rough start to the year, bro. Yeah, so, like we said, this guy's become Mag- Paolo Manoli. Um, he used to be one of Conte's assistants at Chelsea. He played for Rangers in his day. Um, these are all things I found out two seconds before the show started. Anu, do you know anything about this guy other than what I just said? Yeah, um, it's good that this podcast will go out after... I'm gonna no fuck, probably shouldn't have said that. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 I, oh after what? <laughs> <laughs> Try to talk yourself no, no, out of this one. Yeah, no. So yeah, he's been announced, guys. He's been announced. Uh, by the time you're watching this, he's been announced. Um, I'm gonna upload this. But right yeah, now. no. No, you know, I'm gonna delete. I'll delete the entire channel. <laughs> I will. No, well, that, that <laughs> and, doesn't um, matter because I'm gonna upload it to Twitter. Just, just this clip. Um, but yeah, he's here. Welcome to Spartak. Um, and by the way, this is recorded he... on the 25th of December, so like, Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, he's here. Uh, wel- welcome him to the club. Uh, sad that Vittoria left. Um, because he, did he seemed not like a very football. nice person. He saved, he saved football, but he also didn't. <laughs> he saved European, he saved European football. Um, unfortunately, couldn't do that in Russia. But yeah, Vanoli is here. Uh, of course, not many people know much about him because this will be his first managerial job. But we have heard good things in the form that uh, he was influential in Conte's systems and in his backroom stuff. He managed Italy, I think, one of Italy's youth teams. Did pretty well with them. And um, yeah, it, it, it seems like he knows... Uh, he knows tactics, he knows, he seems like a pretty technically sound guy from what we've heard. So hopefully he'll build a nice system, hopefully we'll play well and three tough games to start off. Um, but I hope they go well, because otherwise it's going to be a rough start to uh, 2022. Yeah, I mean, all I can say is I, I hope he, he actually does well, because I always like seeing managers start out in Russia, I always like it when when you know like up and coming managers like bring their ideas and stuff and you know use russia as a bit of a testing ground um, it's always something interesting yeah. to see and it always is a, a big benefit to the league when when something comes out of of, of it so but so like you know what i i figured it out i figured the key to success in russia and it's what? only one thing it's adaptation that's it because tedesco adapted did well all right Carrera adapted, did well. Yeah. Schwartz adapted, did well. Like, if you look at the country as equal to you, and if you, like, op- approach it with an open mind, if you try to understand it, yeah. then you do well. Because at the end of the day, we know the quality of football isn't insane, right? Yeah. We know that. And you look at people like Mancini, they came in here, thought they could rule the place, fucked off, yeah, didn't yeah. do much. Exactly. Right? Looked at Rangnick, did the same thing, didn't do much, Right? So is it, it's just a question of like adapting and sort of treating it as a, as a decent challenge and then people do well. Usually. Yeah, like I, th- I think that that's a really good point. Like it is, and I, as, as his first job, I don't think that that's the way he's thinking. I think that he's going to come in here and be level-headed and he's not going to take any yeah. game of complacency. Like say what you want about the Russian Premier League, but it is one of the hardest leagues to win every game in because yeah. like any team on any given day can show up and like that's proven by the way like what Ural did this week the way Sochi yeah. beat Spartak like we have genuinely eight teams challenging for European spots like if you look at the table you got like eight teams challenging for Europe and that's not including Spartak and Ruben this season that tells you everything you need to know and none of these teams are pushovers Rostov have been playing against Manchester United had been had beaten Bayern Munich in recent history. Yeah. Isu Novgorod could show up on the day. Arsenal Tula are never an easy game, home or away. Yeah. Zenit know that all too well. 
around <laughs> are just yeah. one of these teams that are just so hard to score past these days. Defensively rock solid. Ufa, any given day, Aguilar can show up and you're fucked. And Himke also can show up on their day. They've got Himke really was really good last season. Exactly. They were like one of the best teams in the league last season in the second half. So Exactly. They've got some really yeah. super players, really experienced guys. Genuinely, Russian League deserves a lot of respect. And it's like... This right. I watched the Russian league. I started watching the Russian league because I'm Russian and I wanted to, you know, support a team in Russia and and all of this stuff. But I've been watching it for now almost ten years consecutively. You know, back in the day, I didn't have YouTube. I had to you know, stream games or get these dodgy boxes to watch them on. And like, I can genuinely say, right, I wouldn't have stayed if it wasn't entertaining. If the, if the Russian yeah. league was like the Europe Ukrainian league, where you know which teams you're gonna beat and which teams you're gonna lose to. I would not be here. Like, the Russian yeah. League is one of the most interesting leagues in the world, and I stand by that. Hanu said, the football is not the most technical, and that's true at times. But you can get really technical players in it. And you can, for it's, sure. It's super entertaining regardless. Yeah, but like, the thing, the thing, the point with that basically is that, like, if you do the basics well, if you understand it well, right, yeah. Then even if you aren't like a world beating manager, even if you aren't Pep Guardiola, then you can you can win here. You can win here, right? Yeah. It's not like you're going up against Liverpool and Chelsea in in the Premier League, right? Yeah. You don't need to do that much. Whereas if you are a big name, yeah. it's no guarantee that you'll succeed. It's no you can't just come in here and be like, "Oh, you know what, man, these guys aren't serious. I'm coming here for a paycheck." Like they like yeah. they do in China and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, so I mean, this guy, listen, I don't credit to him, first of all, for making his first job a club like this with so much pressure, with so much intensity, with so many expectations. So clearly he knows what he's getting into. And uh, respect, I mean, I hope he does well. Nothing but support for him. I hope so too. On to some draws, right? There was only one draw but... for Europe in, in, in Zenit because Spartak are around the head because... They came first. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yeah, so yes, they are. Zen are um, playing against Real Betis. Really difficult to call it at the moment. Like, it's so far away. So, don't think there's any point in talking about this until about a week before. Hanu, would you agree with me there? Sure. Not the most difficult draw they could have got. Um, I was hoping for Rangers, who Dortmund ended up getting, but we could have also had Napoli. We could have had Braga. We had Sociedad, Lazio, Olympiacos, and Zagreb. Realistically, Rangers or Zagreb would have been the teams I wanted, or maybe Braga, but you'll take Betis any day of the week over a few of the others, so it's going to be an interesting game for sure. Um, and then Russia were also drawn in the Nations League today, the 25th of December, of course. Does anyone um, care? Yeah, um, I care, because I really wanted them to get Russia, and they didn't. Um, so Ukraine are going to come to Ireland. I will come. To that match yeah that's 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 a good tie that's a good tie scotland are coming to ireland i'm gonna enjoy that armenia are coming to ireland i'm gonna enjoy that as well russia have a fairly winnable group russia yeah. are playing against iceland israel and albania three teams that they should not be losing to let me tell you this if russia don't come first in this group that's trash that is absolutely trash like yeah like, just absolutely ridiculous. I get it that they're going to play Poland as well in, in the, the World Cup qualifiers in the meantime. But this should be Russia's chance to get up into the A group. You know, put themselves with the likes of Germany, Italy, Belgium, Netherlands, Spain, Portugal, France, Croatia. Like, Russia aren't worse than Austria. They're not worse than Czech Republic. They're not worse than Hungary. They're not worse than Wales. They're probably level, level playing field with De Denmark as well. Like... Russia really should nah. be in that top yeah. 16 teams. This is their chance to do it. And I'd be very surprised if they didn't. That's what I'm going to say. I can't name name one Albanian player. Uh, uh, Hysash, the right back. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, That was the one. I, I can only name like two. I can yeah, name there's that, also, you know, that um, Russia, yeah. the keeper. Yeah, 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 exactly, him too. So there you go. Like yeah. Albania, it's not like they're pushovers. Israel are definitely not pushovers. Iceland yeah. definitely are not pushovers either. But saying that, Russia can't lose to Iceland. Look at the size of Russia, look at the size of Iceland. You can say the same thing about 
either of the other two countries, Israel's tiny. Tel Aviv, not the nicest place, as me and Hanu found out from uh, from, 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 from <laughs> well, I'm I'm and uh, Albania, cool place, but look, you should not be competing with Russia. Russia really should come out of this with maximum one loss. The rest of the game should yeah. either be wins or draws. That's what I'm going to say. You know, a draw, obviously, never the best result, but you can always understand the draw. So, Yeah, I agree. Um, Hello to whoever that was in your family. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they're still up. It's 1.30, um, but whatever. But they wanted to hear the live um, podcast. Yeah, they, they probably did, honestly. Um, but, no, I think that loss will be to Iceland away. Because I can see Iceland that. Away. I can see that the rest yeah. of the games really sh- we should be winning. So very, very confident about it. Really like the uh, really like the look of it. So that's that's pretty much um, all we really yeah. need to say. Um, can do we have any other topics? Oh, we do, we do, we do. Let me get this up. This is gonna take me a minute. So uh, what, what is what is it, Adam? What is it? We are going to look at the players who are going to be released. The release list. The, the uh, free agent uh, list, shall we say. There's a release list. There's also a, a transfer list. Like Gosh, a potential transfer we don't, list. We don't need, like, potential transfer list. Let's just go through it quickly. Sadar Asman to Leon. 99% done. Either Zen are going to sell him for 2 million now. Or he's going to go for free in the summer. Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Yuri Alberto seems like a very, very interesting player is friends with a lot of brazilians in in the zenith team would be very interesting i think that um that would be a lot of fun augustin alvarez is also linked to zenith both of those are uh, potential replacements for asman of course uh, and yeah. alberto is the one i'd want out of those two to be honest alexander lomovitsky is linked to ruben not sure why i don't know how much he can do there I don't know how much he'd improve that team. I don't think he'd even start, to be honest. Kirill Bozhenov uh, to Spartak would be interesting. Leon Klassen, German flag. He's actually got a Russian passport, so I don't know why that's there. <laughs> yeah, we're done. Um, Leon Klassen to Spartak would be a very interesting one. Um, Max, uh, how do you even say that name? Besushkov? Probably. Because like, it's kind of like like that looks like it's a German spelling, but it looks like it should be a Russian name. Anyway, he is linked to Spartak as well. Another German flag, but he does have Russian citizenship. So, you know, would be very interesting signings for Spartak under Vinoli. Um And then the last one, very interesting, Ryan Porteous uh, from Rangers to uh, Krasnodar, which... That would be a bit of a mad one. That would be a very mm-hmm. mad one. But it would be really cool to see a Scottish player in Russia. The last one we had was Aidan McGeady. Uh, before he became Irish. Yeah. Well, no. He, uh, I don't know. I don't know if he got called up before or after his uh, his Spartak days. But he was born and raised in Scotland. Has a Scottish accent, very thick. Only actually came to Ireland for the first time when he got called up to the, the national team. So, you know, we can count them as Scottish for this uh, for this chat but all would be very good signs I think apart from Lomovitsky um, yeah. so not much else to discuss there I think you're agree- in, in agreement with me there yeah for sure ok now we're going to go through the players who are out of contract in the summer right and what, I, what we want to do is just basically say do we think they're going to sign a contract or do we think they're going to leave right if they, if you think yeah. they're going to leave, tell me where you think they're going to go. Okay, okay, let's start with a very easy one, Asman. Leaving and he's going to Lyon. Exactly, Zuba. Going to sign an extension. How long? Two years. Yeah, I can probably agree with that. I think that he'll sign for a year at least. Most likely yeah. two years. And I think that it's going to be kind of on the understanding that, okay, 
it might even be a one plus one kind of deal where if he plays well enough then they'll trigger a contract in extension I think that that wouldn't be something that then it would be against um, so I wouldn't be surprised there Rikitsky gonna sign a contract I think he said that he's ready to cut his wages to sign it so gonna sign a contract two years again I'm gonna I did not know that um, I'm gonna say I was gonna say he's gonna leave but now I think he'll stay but only for one year where would he leave to though I think he will stay he can't go back to Ukraine no he can't but this is the thing I just I don't know if he's the long term thing for Zenit at this point I think that sure he's got another season in him but then past that will he be better than someone we can bring in and I don't think that's that's correct I don't think he is so for that reason I think he'd sign for one year and then maybe move to a different Russian club or maybe retire like he's not young uh, yeah so you just you never know I do like saying that I think he will sign for one year at least uh, Victor Klassen yeah. leaving and I would like to see him go to a top five league, but I think he'll either go to MLS or Turkey, unfortunately. That's interesting. I think he'll stay. I think maybe he will. I, I think know. that think. he had the potential to go abroad to a very good league. Not sure that potential is there anymore after his uh, his really serious injury. He has been very good for Krasnodar in recent weeks, and I feel like if they yeah. said to him like, "Look, you'll be the main man here again." feel like he'd stay. Shigo. I do not know. Um, That's I the do face of know. a man who does know and doesn't want to say. No, no, I, I seriously, <laughs> honest to God, do not know. Honest to God, do not know. Um, to be honest with you, I hope he stays. Yeah. I hope he stays. Yeah, like he's good enough to stay. There's no reason for him to leave, really, so would be interesting if he does Bakayev which one is this by the way Zarin Khan he's out of contract yeah I think he's gonna stay what about you I don't know I do not know um I would like him to stay uh, he is better than Miranchuk <laughs> 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 He's better than Miranda. <laughs> Listen, okay. Only one Russian player has scored a goal <laughs> that won a European group. And it's not Miranchuk. Okay? <laughs> it is not Alexei Miranchuk. Zalim Khan Bakayev did win us an entire group. First time since 1995. Second time in a 100 year history. The facts are there. But they're in the same competition now. Okay, right. And Bakaya's going to win still. We'll see. I hope that Atlanta gets Spartak now. Akinfeyev. Okay. One season in retirement. Although we've been saying that for four years now. I don't think so. I don't think that that's, that's the case at all. I think that he signs a two-year contract. And I think he does those two years and then retires. I think that one year is not enough. I think that he's like he's proved himself. Like, he's got the most clean sheets out of every every goalkeeper. In the yeah, he's, he's like he can't go wrong. Can't that's the thing. He's so solid, and I think that he will retire at CSKA. I think that he's definitely useful for another two seasons. Ahmedov. Contract extension, three years. Interesting. I think he leaves. I don't think they let him leave, man. Because first of all, he's too young. What do you mean? To they just leave they let leave. him leave. I think he's at twenty three or twenty four at this point. He, He's the same age as me, I think. He's 23. Yeah, he's 23. and I think he's quality, and I think he's he can handle the midfield for a few years. So I think... Because who's going to sign him? Krasnodar, I think, are the only option. He's been linked to them in the past. Krasnodar um, are an option. I think that Rubin is also an option. I, I, I think he's going to play around for a bit and get like a huge three-year contract extension. That's how they think it out. We'll see. You've gained him. I can see Zenit or one of the other big clubs getting him on a free. That's exactly what I thought. It, exactly what I was thinking. I think that, you know, Russian centre-back, very promising. 
has been very very solid in the past made some mistakes but not that many but can't get in ahead of Balbuena and Ordiets. why not why not take a risk I think they yeah. I think he wants to play football and he's good enough to play at a lot of big teams why not go to a either Zenit or Spartak maybe if, if Zhigo leaves yeah like I genuinely think that maybe Rakitsky and Zhigo's contracts are kind of dependent on if he comes there um it'd be very interesting anyway I think that he's definitely definitely will go I don't think he stays yeah that's fair that's okay. fair the three of us going 100% yeah I think so as well Back to Poland. Turkey. I can see it. Everyone goes to everyone goes to Turkey. I can see it. Kill Hermy. Yeah. I how old is he? Jesus. Oh, I can see him playing out one season and then becoming a coach or like a translator at the club or something. I can see that too. Um, he's thirty six. He's the, oh, his birthday was four days ago, nice. Um, so, yeah. I think he'll sign. I think he'll sign for a year or two and then retirement, work at the club. I think so too. I think that one one year is the extension he'll get. Christian Oboa. Retirement. You think he's going to retire at the end of the season? Yeah. I don't think so. I think he's going to sign the same thing for a year because he said, like, he said to RFN that he's in the form of his life. And that was last season. Like, not that much can change in a year, I feel. And Sochi are doing really well. I sp- especially, I think, if they get into Europe, I think that he will stay for one season and have his one last dance in Europe. That's fair. And I think, you know what, I'd be really sad when the world retires. Not just because I interviewed him. But also because I do think that he's like, he has a serious shout to be the best foreigner in Alpine history. No, that's ridiculous. Yes, he does. But he has yes, a he serious does. shout. One hundred percent. No, he's he's in the Hall of Fame. He is top three without a doubt. No, he's not. Do you know how long he's been around? That doesn't matter. But what do you mean that he's been twelve years that at the top? Doesn't matter. Twelve years at the very top. 13 years even. No, that doesn't matter. He's not. And, and Hulk came. Hulk. Oh, everyone's answer is Hulk. Hulk was here for three seasons. Yeah. Maybe four. Was it even four? I don't know. Oh, it was. It was, was. Three it seasons, was longer right? than three seasons. It was not longer than three seasons. It was. Are you messing? 2012 to 2015. 2012 to 2015. Three and a half at most. 2016. When did he leave? Did he leave in January or? Uh... Yeah, I suppose it was January. So three and a half years, right? So then, no, like, he, did he not join in January as well, though? No, I think no, he September. joined. September twenty twelve. Yeah. Man, I don't yeah, care yeah, yeah, what yeah. you say. I actually, I, I could not care less what you say. He's the best foreigner in RPL history. And that's not changing. And then you've also got other players like Wagner Lowe okay, well, and. Like, don't get me wrong, Naboa is a fantastic player, but no. No. No, look, that's the thing. That is the thing you don't get. Like, we respect Hulk and Wagner up to this extent because they're very flashy players, score a lot of goals. They're very appealing footballers to watch. Noboa is like, he's always the creator, he's always the backbone of the team. He's not as flashy of a player, right? Yeah. But you look at what Noboa has achieved. Noboa was in the team when Ruben beat Barcelona. Yeah. Noboa was in the team when uh, Zenit beat Dinamo 8-1. Noboa was in the team when they played uh, when Rostov played Bayern Munich and Manchester United. He might have been in the team when I don't know if he was. Was he in the team when Dinamo won all of their European games? Six out of six. Uh, that was in like 2014-15, I think. I don't know. Yeah, but like. This guy has been around for so long, played for ev- almost every top club in Russia, balled out at all of them, right? 
he I think he has the most appearances of any foreigner in Russian football. Yeah, that, that so like, say that's true. Yeah, so I I think he's I think he's a fair shout for number one. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he's a fair share fair in for maybe top five or something, but definitely not number one. Anyways, small. Yeah. Levin, hundred percent. For who? I want to see him go abroad. That won't happen. I want to see him go abroad. I don't know. I don't want. If he goes MLS, that'd be fun. But I'm telling you, Kras- if he actually... goes back to Krasnodar, if he goes back to Krasnodar, that's serious. That'd be fun. I think he'd ball out there. Yeah, I agree with you. I actually think that that would be a really good move from it, even if he's second fiddle to Cor- Cordoba. I think that he'd do well. Um, where else could he go? Realistically, Grilia. <laughs> Dinamo, um, maybe. Dinamo did want him. He played, he played there before. You know, obviously, they have Tukavin and a few different other young players, but you know, if you have just a proven score, never a bad thing to have. Um, you know what I would do if I was Dinamo? I'd sign him in January. Yeah. Yeah. I'd sign him. In. He might. He might be the final piece of the puzzle. He, yeah, genuinely, that could be the case. Um, you better get on to to Bubac now and uh, let him know. Yeah, they need to let me cook, man. <laughs> they need to let this podcast cook. Uh, Kabea. Be serious. Leaving. Yeah, I think he's gone. I think he's probably gonna go back to France. Um, maybe he'll go to some weird league where they'll, they'll pay him even more than than they do with Krasnodar, yeah. but. I think he's gone, unfortunately. A uh, very good player, but was never going to be in Krasnodar forever. And um, Zdoyev is the last one. I'm going to stay. Yeah, I think so. I think he signs a two-year extension after. I think that he'll sign one late. I think it's going to be like May or something, but he will sign one in the end, I think. If yeah, he's, he's happy there. They're happy with him. No reason to leave. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, I think that, that that's the best way to describe it. So we've gone through all of them. Um, we have. Do we have anything else to discuss? We're an hour and five minutes in. I don't think that, so. That, that, that's cool. Yeah, I think that's a good place to end. Yeah. Um, we talked about only Russian football this week, Manu. What the hell? We did, and um, I'm surprised. I'm surprised, but I think I think it's fair because it's the last podcast of like the football year. So yeah. for this, for for two months, there's going to be nothing related to football. Yeah, we so, our, our um, upload schedule might not be once a week. I'm just gonna say this out straight. It might be once every two weeks yeah. or something. Next week I'm going back to Samara. Hopefully, as long as I pass a PCR Respect. test. Um, I am vaccinated for anyone who's wondering, but they don't accept Pfizer in Russia, so I have to do a PCR test to get over there and do a PCR test every two days because PCR test QR codes only last for seventy two hours, and it takes twenty four hours to get them. So that's gonna be a pain in the ass, but like hopefully I'll I'll, I'll be over there and yeah. have no issues. Um. So yeah, we're we're hopefully gonna get some interesting guests on in the meantime. Um, we have a few people in mind, uh, a few very very interesting people who we know off Twitter, yeah. just in the Russian football, um, sphere. You might say maybe some people who are just outside of it, but. Um, yeah. We hope to keep it interesting. Hope to keep topics going. And um, I think that's pretty much it for for most for this week, Hanu. Um Yeah, it is. Uh, Merry Christmas. If, if our next episode is after that, happy winter break. Yeah, Merry Christmas and, um, and Happy New Year. If our podcast isn't next week, then it's not going to be until I come back because I come back on the first. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, all of you. Um, and I've, we'll I, see. I, you. I, I would be asked. But I'm not arsed, so just pretend there's snowflakes falling down here. Just <laughs> yeah, pretend, pretend. That. Exactly. I haven't seen snow. We don't, we don't have snow. Oh, uh, don't lie snow. to me. I thought okay. you saw snow when you were in uh, Moscow. Yeah, I did, but uh, we don't so get it here. So you lie to like... me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, because I remember that story. You told me that that that, that was the first time you'd ever seen snow. Yeah, it's not in, I saw it in uh, Kyrgyzstan as well, just falling. That was insane. Well, there you go. Yeah. Right. Well, like, I'm hoping to see some snow. Samara so haven't actually had any snow yet. Um, so that's unfortunate. I think it happen. is meant to be minus 15 next week. And hopefully with some snow that will stick before we get there. Um, but yeah, 
that is pretty much from us. Um, yeah. Guys, always, See ya. as always, leave a like. Um, leave a like. Or dislike, whatever. We don't give a shit at this point. Oh, you know what the great thing is? YouTube what? removed uh, uh, the number of dislikes. Oh, yeah. Put all the dislikes you want because we don't see them. Yeah. Well, actually, we, we see them, see but it doesn't matter. You don't see them, exactly. So. Yeah, exactly. So, we, like, all yeah, these people, people who have been bullying them. us for months now, we know exactly who you are, by the way. So, like, like, you're not listening to the podcast, yeah. but fuck you so much. Like, genuinely, yeah. I really hope you choke on a dick. No one likes you. You have absolutely It will no come leads, back to whatever. Like, it will come back to haunt you. Yeah. Bad karma is a thing, and you have yeah. deserved it in abundance, not just for dislikes, but just for being a genuine, genuine, dickhead, ugly person. Just in every exactly. every, every sense of the word. You argue with people for no reason, and you're just, you're just an asshole. So, um, fuck you. Uh, yes. But yeah, on that note, everyone have a good Christmas and a happy new year. Hanu, we, I'm sure we'll talk in the meantime, but. Of course. Bye.